Hello YouTube, welcome back to another video. This is Champion 2D Rob back again. And here it is guys, after all this talk, I know a lot of people have been waiting to see this video. So basically, this is gonna be a video talking about the Sega Saturn. Um, I recently acquired one. And uh, this video is basically gonna be me talking about sort of my past experience with the Saturn or lack thereof but my views on the Saturn and of course I'm going to show you my Saturn and I'm going to show you some of the games uh, that I initially got for it as well so yeah um as probably a lot of you that sort of watch me know uh, I'm a big proponent of 2D games like that is that's where my heart is when it comes to gaming it's 2D sprite based games and i've never owned the saturn which is shocking because as a lot of people know it is like one of the systems for 2d games now the reason why um i never got a saturn like even from back in the day is because um i should explain so i was a sega kid during the 16-bit era i had a sega mega drive I absolutely adored the Mega Drive, um, but I was also a 32X adopter at that time. And uh, as everyone would know, the 32X got dropped by Sega very quickly in favor of the Saturn. And, you know, back then, you know, no internet, you know, I wasn't really fully informed of what was going on uh, with Sega and what their plans were for the future so i i did blindly buy the 32x at the time not knowing too much i mean i sort of knew about the saturn but i didn't know when it was coming out or what, what the plans were um so yeah uh, i got the 32x i bought two games of it uh virtua virtual racing and star wars arcade and admittedly i loved those games but unfortunately i never got any more games because um Sega pretty much dropped the system. Now, there were obviously more games that come out for the system, but by that point, I sort of realized that the that Sega was dropping the system, and uh, it just, it was hard. It was hard to hear that, because I felt like I'd, I'd sort of blown my money for nothing. And um, so I was angry at Sega. I was, because um, when, I, when I sort of got the announcement of when they were going to release the Saturn, I was just so... I felt I felt betrayed, felt cheated, and um, I just said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to support Sega. If this is how they treat their customers and and how they're willing to drop the systems, I just I just didn't feel secure enough to buy the Saturn because I I, I didn't know if they were going to drop the Saturn, you know, which in Europe they kind of did. So in some ways I did sort of dodge a bullet, but that being said though, I did miss out on a lot of quality games and so yeah so I, I adopted I got onto the PlayStation as a kid and I love the PlayStation you know um, I, I had some fantastic memories of it and I'll never I will never take that back I love the PlayStation it's, it has an amazing library of games but you know years after the fact um, sort of in the 2000s when I started you know being more invested in, in sort of gaming and learning more about gaming history and stuff um i started doing a bit more research on the saturn and then of course i started to learn about the japanese saturn and it was insane the amount of games that was never released in europe but came out in japan and um i've always i've always sort of had an interest in getting a saturn but the reason why I never got one sooner is because, again, this is not to do with the Saturn itself, but rather I felt uncomfortable buying old, you know, in some cases, 20-year-old uh, disc-based systems because you just kind of think that the laser's going to be damaged because I, you know, in my own past history, I went through two PlayStations, two, two PS2s, two PS3s, so I didn't think, I didn't feel comfortable buying a used a disc based system so I guess that's also what sort of put me off and why I never bought one but you know after talking to a lot of people within the community uh, Scott Sega Saturn lad 
uh, Adam Shock 16, uh, Scott Sega Zombie, um, you know, just sort of talking to them and, uh, and also uh, Pete on a retro tip as well. You know, I started to feel more comfortable with the idea of getting a sad, but it was, it was always one of those things where I just sort of put it on the, on the back burner. To, you know, because my money was going towards other stuff, so it, you know, it was never like a, a full priority, and it wouldn't be because, you know, I have no nostalgia for the system. You know, usually a lot of the stuff that I want are for systems that I have as nostalgia for. Whether I have no nostalgia for the games, I do have nostalgia for the systems: Super Famicom, uh, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive, etc., etc. But um, all this changed when I went to see Scott for his birthday. I went to his house, Scott Sega Zombie. I went to his house for his birthday, and uh, it was a great time. There was a lot of great YouTubers there. Um, I had so much fun, and I was knackered actually because uh, I'd been at work the, the night before, and I, I didn't really get much sleep, so I was pretty knackered. But you know, I managed to make it through the day, uh, and it was a really great time. But, uh, you know, because Scott knew I was coming, um, we sort of spoke about it beforehand. He made sure that he set up his uh, Saturn, his Japanese Saturn, so that we could all play and stuff. So I did eventually get to go on the Saturn. And I spent a good amount of time with it. Uh, Scott Sega Saturn Lad actually brought down his collection of games, which is kind of weird because obviously, you know, Sega Zombie has his own collection of games, but. Scott brought his collection of games, and also Pete uh, brought his Satiator as well. So we had access to, uh, to other games uh, as well, which I also got to play on. And it was once I was playing um, the games at his house that uh, when I sort of came away, I just sort of felt like, yeah, I want the set. Because I absolutely loved what I was playing. Uh, the port of the fighters uh, that I was playing was just fantastic, uh, of note, what I played there was uh, X-Men Children of the Atom and that game is like a very nostalgic game for me uh, I played it to death in the arcades uh, that that game for me was like a revelation that was like next gen stuff because of the visuals uh, the fact that you could jump to a, like a second tier level it was amazing that game was amazing to me because before that you know we were just used to Street Fighter which is a great game in itself but it was like it felt next level so I used to play that a lot in the arcades and I was sorely disappointed with the PlayStation port of Children of the Atom. It is awful. It is awful. You know, but yeah, it's not a good port. But uh, yeah, so when I was playing that over at, um, at Scott's house, um, I just absolutely loved it. And I, and I played a bunch of games uh, and I just sort of came away with, you know, yeah, I have to get assistance. So, also, as a level of encouragement, at the end of the night before I left, uh, Scott Sega Zombie, he uh, kindly donated this game to me, and that was uh, uh, Puyo Puyo 2. And he just did all games. It's a cheap game. It only goes for about a five or so. And uh, he, he just sort of gave me this game as a sort of impetus, you know, slight motivation to get the system. Because the idea, I guess the idea was, you know, if I if I do, because I told him about my my fear of uh, my my worry of buying a used disc based system. So I guess he he gave this to me as well as as well. Let this be your test game, you know, so that you can test the system to make sure that the the system is working, so you don't have to shell out money on a game only to find out you know your console's broken. So he donated this to me as well, and um, so it was very kind of you, Scott, if you're watching, and um, yeah. Uh, this is a great game, by the way. Puyo Puyo too. I mean, we, everyone knows Puyo Puyo. Uh, but yeah, it's a really great game, and it was. It was. It worked really well for me because I did use it to test out the system. But I, I also got other games. But yeah. So anyway, it just so happened as well around the, uh, uh, just afterwards, uh, shortly afterwards, uh, Adam Shock Sixteen, uh, he announced that he was going to sell off his Saturn collection. Now he had a he had a full PAL Saturn set, but he also had um, a couple of Japanese systems, as well as a bunch of Japanese games. So, you know, I was straight onto him after I saw his video, and just said, "Look, mate, I'm interested. Um, I want to buy one of your Saturns." 
and uh, I want to buy some new games. And uh, he showed me pictures of some of the games he had, and of course the system itself. So yeah, so I'll just won't bore you too long. Uh, I did pick up the San. So this is the uh, st it's the standard Mark One San. Uh, it was unboxed, so no box, um, but it works really well. It works like a champ. And uh, as you can see here, I have the four uh, four megabyte. That's going to be from one of the games I'm going to show you in a bit. But yeah, it's a stand the standard grey, and it works really, really well. And I'm absolutely over the moon with it. So yeah, so I bought this off uh, Adam, who did me a really good price as well, by the way. But uh, I also bought a few games off him, and these are just like. Uh, some were like you know well most of them are games that I, I, I wanted like really wanted and one was just more of a curiosity and the game I was curious about was this one here and uh, I forgot what it's called I'll probably just write it here at the, at the bottom but it's a fighting game a 2d fighter not one I was familiar with and um, it's really good. It is really good. I must admit. And it does. It does come with a spine card. Uh, you're going to see, actually, guys. Uh, uh, probably not in this video, but in my next video, where I'm going to go through all the games I've bought. That I, I was a bit of a fiend for spine cards. Not all my games have spine cards, but uh, um, I did sort of want to try and get them with spine cards if I could. But yeah, this this game just looks really, really cool. And it's actually a really good fire. Um, I quite enjoyed this one. I've never seen it before. Never heard of it before. I think I'd seen the I'm pretty sure I'd seen the cover. And it just sort of just caught my eye, really, because sort of the tiger and stuff. Um, but it's a really decent little game, so I'm actually quite chuffed with it. Uh, but the first game that I actually wanted to buy off him, like, straight away. And it's this one here, and that is... Uh, uh, dead or alive so the reason why i wanted to get this was because uh back in the day i loved dead or alive in the arcade and it was probably the only 3d fighter at that time that i genuinely liked um the other 3d fighters i'm talking about sort of like mid 90s the late 90s when tekken 3 came out um i embraced it more soul calibur or, or soul blade um I also loved in the arcade, but before that, um, it, for me, it was all about Dead or Alive. Uh, I wasn't a big fan of the Virtual Fighter games. Um, for me, it was about this. This was the game that really convinced me. And even though uh, Dead or Alive did get a release on the PlayStation, uh, it's not based on the arcade game. It was actually built from the ground up. And the reason for that is because the arcade version was actually based off on uh, Saturn hardware. So this game is a lot more like the arcade game, whereas the PlayStation game, as great as that game is, it's it's just a very different game. Um, so I was really chuffed to get the the game that was closer to what I remember. This is not arcade perfect, admittedly, but it looks great though, and it is exactly like it was in the arcades uh, in terms of the gameplay and stuff. And uh, yeah, so I was I really wanted this one, and this is actually the collector's edition which is which i wasn't really that bothered about uh, to be honest I, I wasn't really i didn't really care about getting a collector's edition but i think it comes with an art book and, and this slip case but uh, either way yeah really chuffed and for me this was definitely a, a must-have and the next game that i won from him this is a game i've wanted to own for years uh, it's just always it's always interested me because it's an exclusive to the side and yeah it's a really good game and that is um, Cyber Bots. So yeah, really chuffed to get this one as well. And this is a really fun game. Awesome 2D fighter. Big, massive mechs. Colourful. Um, just so much fun. Uh, excellent game from Capcom. And it's sort of a spin-off of uh, Armoured Armored Warriors. Or Powered, is it called Powered Armour? The Japanese version, which is a side scroll and beat em up. Uh, you can actually play it on the Switch and uh, PS4 as part of the uh, what's it called the, the 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 Belt Action Collection. 
So uh, yeah, really cool game to get. And finally, this game was like, when I, when I saw he had this game, absolute must have, had to get it. And you know what? Playing it on the, on the Saturn is like, it, it is amazing. It is amazing. Because they have it, it's on the PlayStation. And it, I think it's a good game on the PlayStation. It's very playable, but unfortunately, due to the lack of RAM power, um, you know, it, it they did have to make some cutbacks. But this game with the extra RAM is just amazing on, on the side. And I can't believe this game never got released in Europe as well. And that is, of course, um, X Men versus Street Fighter. Uh, wow, honestly, I was amazed by this port. It's so fast. Um, there's barely any loading times. Uh, it's it's a fantastic it's a fantastic game, and uh, you know it's it's borderline arcade perfect. You know, it really is. I mean, especially when you compare it to the PlayStation port. It really like, anyone who's played the PlayStation version and has played this will know what I'm talking about. But yeah, I was really uh, really really chuffed to get this game. And um, yeah, absolute must have. If you're gonna get into Japanese imports, yeah, this is one of the games you have to get. Amazing. So yeah, so basically those were the games uh, that I got from Adam and Scott as well, uh, initially. Uh, but it wasn't long after that that I started buying games. Now I'm not gonna go through all the games that I bought in this video. I'm gonna save that for the next video. Well, I won't leave you hanging guys, I will show you the first few games that I bought initially uh, because I've just I've just always wanted to play these games and I think well, actually one of them was actually it wasn't a game necessarily that I was initially going to get uh, it, it was always been in my mind to buy it but after after spending some time at uh, Sega Zombies house and I've got, I've got to say this, Scott Sega Saturn lad big influence on some of my purchases because he bought. He went. He went to Scott's house. He bought like a big, massive case with like tons and like loads of games. And uh, one of the games we played a lot is the one I'm about to show you here. And this actually was uh, my first purchase. Uh, the reason why I bought this first was just because of you know it just came at the right time really. Because uh, some of the games that I really wanted, unfortunately, I just had to bide my time a little bit, wait for the right one to come along, and so forth and so forth. But the one that really sort of surprised me, and uh, I had to get it because I just enjoyed it. We played it a lot at uh, Sega Zombies House, and that is the uh, Street Fighter Collection. So this basically has all the sort of classic Street Fighters, uh, but it also has a uh, uh, an updated version of Street Fighter Alpha 2. It's, I think it's called uh, Alpha 2, or so Zero 2. Not Alpha, I'm from the West. <laughs> Uh, sorry, excuse me if I'm stiffing by the way. I've got I've still got a bit of a cold. I've not fully recovered. But uh, yeah, so it's also got uh, Street Fighter Zero Two uh, Dash, which is like an upgraded version of of, of Alpha Two. And uh, we played this a lot. We played classic Street Fighter a lot in the sand. It's fantastic. Love playing it. And I know you know we can play Street Fighter in so many different ways, but I wanted to get it on the sand. And this to me is, is, is a great collection to get. And I have to say, I got I, I lucked out with this one. This one is lovely, it's minty. Uh, I do believe it has, yes it does. It does have the spine card as well. Uh, as uh, Daz would say, uh, Kidditch. <laughs> spine Kidditch. <laughs> um, yeah, so chuffed to get that actually. Really was. Um, so it wasn't initially on my list, but like, after playing it, and uh, yeah, I, I dug it. I really dug it. Uh, the next game I bought, and I bought this around the same time. So I ordered this around the same time as uh, Street Fighter Collection. And uh, I know this game sort of tends to get a, quite a few mixed views about it. Some people think it's not very good. Some people think it's decent, you know. The general consensus is that it's, it's, a, it's an average game. Um, I, I don't think it's average. I think it's very good. Um, I don't, you know, it's not it's not going to wow a lot of people. Visually, I think it will wow a lot of people. But it's, I know as, as a fighter, it's, it's a lot of people think it's just sort of middle of the road. Uh, and that is uh, uh, Golden Axe the Jewel. 
And again, this one is minty, uh, and it does it does have it does have spine card as well as other uh, oomph as uh, Marcus X File X File Twenty Seven Oh Eight used to say. A lot of oomph or Brucey bonuses. Um, yeah, chuffed a bit, honestly. Um, this game is lovely. Uh, I, I just and also I do sort of have nostalgia for this game even though I never played it never owned it and basically what it was um, back in the day when I used to collect uh, Mean Machine Sega I didn't collect it but that, that was my magazine of choice as a kid and there was sort of articles on this game and I remember uh, the artwork of the characters would be on the magazines and stuff and I was as a kid I used to try and get into drawing and uh, I would actually use these characters I would try to, to, to copy them freehand uh, and it was this it was characters from this game uh, characters from Darkstalkers and characters from Samurai Showdown that I would sort of try to copy, and um, yeah, so the so this is sort of like a very memorable nostalgia nostalgia for me um, because of that. So I always I always wanted to own this game, and I do enjoy it visually. I love it. I love the two D artwork in this game. It's definitely got some of the best visuals on the sand in terms of two D sprite work. Uh, love it. And uh, I think it's a good game, you know. I mean, it's not X Men versus Street Fighter. It's not. It's not messing with a lot of the Capcom games. But I still think it's a very good, good fighter, and uh, I enjoy it a lot. And I'm very happy to have a, like a lovely, uh, uh, lovely condition copy of it. Now, this final game here, and this one, like, I had to have it. I had to have it. I brought it up earlier, and uh, that game is, of course. X-Men Children of the Atom. Now I know um, X-Men vs Street Fighter is technically the better game and I used to play that game a lot in the arcades but for me this is the one that I had to own on the Saturn and like like I said before I played this game to death in the early 90s it was about 90, 94, 95 uh, when this game came out in the arcades every time Every time I was in the arcade, now I used to go to the arcades a lot in the 90s, and every time I was in the arcade, um, I was playing this game. If I wasn't playing this game, I was playing Daytona. <laughs> it was probably like the two mainstays of any arcade I would go into. They were the two games I would always find and I would play. It just, I just, like, because I was a massive X Men fan, and the X Men cartoon at the time was really popular, and I loved it. So when I saw this game, it was like, oh my god, you know, someone took Capcom fighting, combined it with Marvel Comics and X-Men. That's just a recipe for, for, for greatness right there. And it didn't disappoint, doesn't, doesn't disappoint. Fan, fantastic game. The only thing I will say about this is that it's a shame, because I know this game was quite an early game as well for the Saturn. So it doesn't... <coughs> It doesn't take advantage of the RAM cards, which is a real shame because um, this game would have been fantastic if it had the added RAM. Uh, there is still some degree of slowdown in this game. You know, there's still some missing frames of animation, but it's far superior port though to the uh, PlayStation version. Honestly, the PlayStation port of this game is piss poor. It really is. I mean, I've got I've got it back there, so I'm, I'm gonna tell you right now, like it was awful. I was so disappointed when I bought that. Because at least, at least I'll tell you one thing, X-Men vs. Street Fighter, uh, Marvel vs. Capcom, Marvel Super Heroes, all those other games, uh, you know, even despite their drawbacks on the PlayStation, they're all fun to play, they're fluid, you can play them, they're playable, you know. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I can't say the same for X-Men vs. Street Fighter. It's so choppy, it was so choppy, it was awful, I just found it unplayable. I don't believe that Capcom actually ported it over. It was done by another company. I can't remember what it was. But Capcom did go on to port the other games onto the PlayStation, which is why they're a lot better. But this game is just amazing. 
and uh, it, meant, it meant a lot to me to have this game. Um, <coughs> I do believe, I do believe it does come with the spine card as well, yes it does. And it was a lovely copy and uh, I bought it off Hit Japan, a very good seller on YouTube, on YouTube, on eBay. <laughs> uh, yeah, a great seller on eBay, uh, posts really quickly and uh, uh, I do recommend Hit Japan. But yeah, it's just really, really happy to get this. It's weird, right, because I love X-Men vs Street Fighter, but, and it, it is a far better game on the Saturn, but I just, it just, it just means, it just meant so much to me to have this game. This is the game I wanted uh, back when it was released on the European Saturn. So just really, really happy with that. So yeah, um, <coughs> <coughs> Sorry guys, really still, I'm still not 100%, um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm chuffed a bit, I've been playing the Saturn a lot, um, I'm going to make another video guys with the rest of the games that I bought, I won't leave it so long either, uh, you will see the video uh, not long after this one, but I will just say just to finish off here, um, I'm going to say that uh, so far my experiences with the Japanese Saturn it's been amazing, you know, I've really enjoyed it. It's what I've been playing now since, um, I think I bought the system back in uh, November. I can't remember, was it November, October? I can't quite remember now, but uh, I've just been having a blast. Uh, it's been it's been my retro system of, of playing when I'm not, uh, you know, a modern gaming aside, you know, if I'm playing retro games, this is what I'm playing, playing the sand and absolutely loving it. And uh, Sega Saturn, Sega Saturn Land was right. Um, you know, this this system is what I should have had in my collection. Uh, being a fan of 2D games, uh, which is what I really love about gaming. I love, I love, you know, it's in my name. You know, I, I champion 2D games. It's, it's what I'm about. And this is the system to own if you love 2D. Um, it's a brilliant system. Absolutely love it. Uh, it's fantastic. Yeah. Sorry, I'm just rambling now. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to leave it there guys, uh, thank you very much for watching, um, I appreciate everyone that was waiting to see this video and uh, I will, as soon as I'm done making this video, I'm going to make the next video, so I won't leave it too long, so I won't leave you guys waiting, because I know you, you guys want to see what other games I picked up as well, but uh, anyway guys, thank you very much for watching and uh, shout outs to uh, uh, Shock16. Uh, shout outs to Sega Zombie, uh, Sega Saturn Lad, uh, Pete on a Retro Tip. Um, definitely YouTubers that uh, um, were, were big helps for me in uh, getting involved in this uh, now. So uh, yeah, I'll leave it there guys. Thank you very much and uh, I'll see you in the next vid.